Okay, so we had a quick break in the video there because many residents will find that this black polystyrene, which technically you're not supposed to remove because the, the, the contents are owned by Eon, um, and there is some high voltage things in there, but nothing that's going to cause you any trouble if you're, if you're careful. But I can't even change the screws on this panel. Uh, then these in its wisdom or whoever has put these, so you can't take the panel off without taking this black polystyrene out of the way, and you can't get that off without taking the bar away. So we're going to just undo this bar. Don't forget, this is the thing. Technically, this is Eon's territory, but uh, we, we you, residents need to be able to deal with this. Precaution when going behind the black polystyrene. So I'm going to take this one off. And on this side, we come around here. David? Our building engineer expert, David's going to hold this for us. This is his apartment, this bar, taken two of them off. Could have pre prepared it for speed on the video, but uh, then we're going to come up against this. A little elevation there just to get this one off. Okay. So again, this is something that's well within the ability of anybody, but it's just a bit irritating if you've got one of the systems that you can't get access to the slave control panel. You will need to be able to change two fuses. Eon won't do it for you. Uh, there are people in the building that will help you, of course but you should be able to do the fuse changes yourself. But in this particular case, in this particular apartment, like many, no doubt, the, uh, we can't get access to it. So we're gonna get, that's it. Now, you won't be able to, it's on, a, it's on a tether, so we'll bring this down here. There's nothing live behind here. We can put it on the floor if there's enough room. Just enough length there. There we go. We can get it, probably if we do it this way up. Oh, just, just have it out of the way for a moment. And then we can just slide this black, black polystyrene off. There it is. There's nothing scary behind it. It's just the heat pump. Don't bother taking this one off, just to show you what's behind it. This is the works. This shows the pressure of the system on both sides. Is a, there's a refill loop down here for refilling the system if you run dry. Shouldn't need to touch that. Uh, there's a thermocouple here. Okay. And then there's the important heat pump here. Um, and Interestingly, some spare slow blow fuses. How lovely. Okay, so that is good. But I'm gonna pop this back here because all we need is access to these boxes. Okay, and these are the four screws you want. Okay, this is the slave box, this is the master box. You can see it labeled power, valve, pump, boiler. There's no power, there's no green light there. They're usually green or, or, or red LEDs. These ones are usually red or orange. These ones are usually green. We'll, we'll check. I've taken out one screw, but I've got to get the other ones out. So you can get behind this. This is low voltage. Okay. There's a high voltage wire coming in, but it will be secured properly. So let's see if we can get this thing off, which means we're just getting in here and undoing these. That one's moving. Watch where you are with the, you know, with live wires. There should be no, nothing live, okay? But just keep an eye on things. Okay, this is this is the other fuse in the welcome pack. The other fuse. So take this one off. We take this one off. There it comes. And there's, looks like there's one more screw I'm trying to get in a minute. Just get down, down dirty there. There we are, it's under here. It's the poly pipe underfloor heating system. Let's take that out. We can deliver this panel off in a minute, then we can have a get to the fuse. That's it. Held on there, so this one spins down rather than pulls away, and your fuse is in there. Now, I recommend before touching this, you turn the five amp fuse off up at the uh, the main heating spur. So, remember back here, we're going to come back here, 
turn this, this, heat, this fuse off just to make that safe. Then back to here, just, this just wrestles off. There it comes, it wrestles off and here's the fuse. Now, sometimes it looks blown and it clearly is blown here. If you can just look close up, it's all, it's called corrupt. I'll show you what a new one looks like. I bought a new one for David. In fact, he's got his own. Excuse what it is. In the pack. Here we are, let's have a look at the new one. These are cheap, super cheap, these things. You should have these in the house. Don't come knocking on David's door just because he's got some. Go and buy your own, have it in, in store in your house. There we are, nice and clean, can we see? Beautifully clean. If we look on these close up, like there's a single wire. And compare the corrupt one, it's blown up. Can you see it? So let's give this and put this in the bin. I'm gonna, and to prove, well, we, we can prove the point with the meter if we want to, but we can here quickly with the meter. Let's have the two fuses. This one, just to prove the point how a meter works, we'll put it again on the continuity phase. Well, it's anywhere at B&Q. This one shouldn't be continuous, dead. The new one, hear it? This one goes in the bin. We'll put this one in the system, get the system back in action. So, it just sits in like the one slides in, Dust there, just pop that in there. You can see it's a bit black and it blew up. Something happened, it blew up. Now that tells me that we need to do something else before turning it all on. It blew up that fuse. I'm going to take off these valves in a minute because if one of them is stuck, it can make the system under tremendous pressure and blow. And this five amp slow blow will be the first one that goes. Let's put it back on right in here. Let's put this one back in. That's in now. So, the first thing we're going to do is just put the five amp fuse on over here. Light. Let's see if the lights come on. Wait, well, see if it blows. Before I do that, I'm just going to remove these valves. It's important because that one's been on some load and blown up. These are easy to remove. These are the valves that the thermostats control, and you unscrew it. To get it going, you turn the silver screw and the actuator together anti clockwise. If you just turn this doing nothing, you've got to hold the little screw, I'll show you in a minute, underneath just to get it moving. It's quite tough. Here we go. Once, once it's moving, you can then turn the screw yourself. I'll show you what the screw looks like in a minute. It's moving now. Because if, what, if, all the system, if the fuses are intact and the system's still blowing, it's typically due to one of these being defective. I'm just loosening it myself. The screw, you can see the screw underneath turning. There it is. The screw turns separately. And the red bar should be intact. This is fine. It sits back on there for the moment. Keep them in the same order. They are labelled living room, bedroom one, bedroom two, and that one's unlabeled, but keep them in the same order. If necessary, just gently put it back on. Let's get the others off. And then I'm going to ask David if he's got a spoon, a teaspoon. I'll explain why in a minute. Let's get these all off. Okay. Let's get this off now. If, you, if you're lucky to have only four, that's fine. Some partners have got 12 of these. Okay, they're quite tiresome. So, we'll get this off. Just turn it by hand underneath. There we go, that's the second one. Let's quickly get the other two off. The important thing is that sometimes these valves become jammed. This is why you're advised to turn your heating off on briefly during the summer, just once or every quarter, just to get the system working. Here we are now turning this under this, this screw quite freely underneath, under the body, under the white plastic actuator. That's the third one. Okay. And finally, this one here. This one's quite tough. They haven't been taken off, I don't think, for a while, but who knows. So just unscrew this one. You can see my fingers turning the screw underneath. Turning the, the white thing is just to get it going. Okay, let's get it on. Good. So let's put them in order, let's keep them in order. Not the end of the world we don't keep them in order, but let's do it the right way. There we are. Now, the, the spoon, thank you so much. These little pins here are what inside, when the, when the thermostat calls for heat and turns it on, this thing directs this pin to go down to open up the, 
to uh, to open and close the flow. So you've got to make sure this this is springy. I can feel it nicely. It's springy. It's not jammed. If it were jammed, you need to put a bit of WD-40 on. Without this on, water flows freely. So the default position is, if, if you've got all your lights on and you're just not sure whether these are playing up or not, just unscrew them all. The heat will flow. You won't be able to control it individually, but the heat will flow. Okay. And if you're in the middle of winter and the heat aren't coming, you're freezing cold. That's the thing to do. Let's try the second one. Bouncing nicely. It's nice and free. Third one. Bouncing nicely. No problem. Fourth one. Yep. Good. Good flow. In and out. Return. Keep them in order. Right. Now we can turn the turn the lights back on. So. We've replaced that, that fuse is normal, we know that. So let's keep an eye on the lights. We put this back on, see if it fires up, see if it blows, we'll probably leave with the spark. Okay, and you can see here that the heat the pump's on. So the heat is now working. And we'll find in a minute that these pipes will get hot. The flow pipe and the return pipe will get hot, and all the zones will be on. And um, you can see that there's various different power levels. I usually recommend the second one rather than the third, but let's leave it for now. You can control it with this. So the third rather than the fourth. You shouldn't really need to touch this. But that we now know if you look at over there that the all the lights are on, the, the pump, the valve, the boiler, they're all on. And what we want to see is these lights on. You can just see it there. All those lights are on, which means that all zones, the, the thermostats Try and stand you where so you get a bit of light there. Can you see the lights on there? They're all on. Okay. So we know we know the heating's working. So we're good to go. Um, and what we're going to do is put those valves back on in a minute. Okay. Uh, and then we can um, we know that by adjusting the the thermostats. Now the key thing is that you've always got to have when you're starting a system up, you've got to adjust your thermostats. to a high enough level. So you've got, you've got to make sure, there's no point having a 23, it won't call for heat, because this room must be at least 25, it feels like 26, 27. Uh, you, you would adjust your, um, you'd set your, your, your level to high just to, just to start with, maybe on 28 or 30, but in the winter, it suddenly came on. So we know this room is at 27, 26.5. I had to get it to 27 to call for heat, okay. Uh, I'm not going to adjust it. But the point is that this communicates with those valves. So we're going to go back there and we're going to feel for the manifold, see if it's getting warm. Um, and I would say that without calling for heat, the manifolds won't get hot, but we know it all, we know, we know it all works. Now there's one, one final step. I'm going to put those valves back on. If all else fails and you're not getting any joy from Eon, or people aren't in the bin. There's lots of people that can help there. There's great people like Alistair T, um, David Potter, Asaf Grabinski. Lots of people know this and know the system and they'd be glad to help if, if on the end of a, a messenger call. If all else fails and Eon aren't helping you, you can use this device. I've created this with the help of uh, Alistair, put this together, and you simply slip this off, you do a clip at the back, slip it off. Push it on, it's a ke like a kettle lead, and plug it into uh, the mains, wherever you know mains or an extension lead sometimes is required. This will drive this pump and keep you warm. Take these valves off to, to save the day. If you're really cold and no one's coming to help, this will help you. Eon are not interested. Eon won't like this. They're only interested in this little box. When you call them, they don't want to know about this or anything else. It's totally unsatisfactory. But if you're not getting any joy with Eon, you've got the kids at home and you're freezing cold, Plug this in. It will make the whole house work. What's it called? Uh, well, it's, it's, it hasn't really got a name. It, it's, it's like a kettle lead uh, that is connected to the mains. If you like, it bypasses all of the valves and it simply drives this pump, letting the heat come in. And you've got to have these valves open. If these are on, the thermostats will be stopping it. They're waiting for an instruction. You have to just have these off. Okay? So it's just really a kettle plug, a bit like the... It's not actually a kettle plug like a PC, but it's very similar. I so it's an emergency lead for the winter? Yes, and I can make this available by concierge. You can buy one online. I think I gave Alice the link and it's it about 10 quid, I think. Um, so that's the backup situation. 
So we're happy here. I'm just going to see if any of the th things are calling for heat. So these, yeah, yeah. David, you have a feel there just to make sure that that's warm. We're going to, no, it won't burn. Yeah, you agree, Tom? Yeah. So that's the flow. We're waiting for it to come back through the return, which is this side, but it hasn't come back through yet. It takes time to get through the underfloor heating. But I think we're done on this heating tutorial today, and we'll drill down into some subsections as time goes by. There's one other thing. In here, not that we are supposed to be going behind this black box, if this valve is permanently stuck in, heat won't flow. This is also going to be stuck out. It has got a little bit of a sticky out appearance here. Okay, it's another one that you screw off, but you have to undo that screw there. This valve here has just got a bit of a shoulder that's appearing as heat's flowing. So if you find that everything seems to be on, the valves are open, there's no heat flowing, just take that thing off. Okay, you're not going to harm any, you're not going to harm yourself. Just undo that screw there, in fact, it's been loosened before, and just unscrew that and let it sit off. Let the thing flow. When Eon come, they'll put it all back together again. They'll tell you off, of course, but you've got to have heat. They're in the left lesson of today.